many people do not know how important it is to function with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because without the anointing, you are alone. Without a certain presence on your life, you are alone. The Bible speaks of a very powerful possibility. And he says, Paul speaks to us that it is possible for a man to carry the richest measure of the presence of God in their life. He speaks of how when a man is able of comprehending all the, same, all the love of God, its width, its length, its height, its depth. Next verse, 19. He says that that man will come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. And that man will be filled up throughout their being and to all the fullness of God so that you will have or may have, sorry, the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. It is possible, think about it for a moment, that your body, the human body, can contain the richest measure of the presence of God. There are things in life you must admire, and this is the thing you should desire most. To be filled and flooded with God himself. To be filled with the fullness of God. When I was a young man, I, I was studying this, having come from a Roman Catholic background, and we understood services differently and life differently. So we start digging in. I remember we used to go on a mountain. There's a mountain where me and my friends used to go and pray. I remember one of those days we were coming from the mountain. It was an evening. We were praying the whole day. So we were walking back through the university to go to our hostel. And we met about five young girls. They too were walking to their another direction. And they were coming from the library side. I don't know whether they were, wherever they were going. So we encounter these ladies and they come in a space of about three meters away from us. And the power of God was so strong, it hit them out. They looked like they'd been hit by a gas or something, and, poof, 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 and they fell out. They started weeping and crying. And out of there, some of them actually desired to know who are these young men that they found on the road, and they joined the fellowship. Why? Because they had been touched by a power they had never experienced before. I remember a time when I was in the hostel and we used to pray. There are days you set aside some time of fasting and prayer. And I remember a day, two people wanted to walk into the hostel room I was in and they couldn't enter because the presence of God used to meet them on the door and throw them out, literally. They, they tried, but they could not enter. The power was so mighty that they could not stand in the room where I was. I was. I've had those instances. My wife has had experiences where she can't come close to me sometimes when I'm charged. I know that the human body can be flooded with the presence of God to a degree that even the people standing next to you can feel it. They can sense it. It's tangible. It can be experienced. The presence of God can be experienced. Your body can be flooded with the richest measure. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've read in the Bible where God would appear before men and they fall prostrate because they are overwhelmed by the power of God. The glory of God fills a room and men are not even able to minister. This, this body here can be overwhelmed with the presence. It can be overwhelmed with the presence. And it's, that's the presence that gets healing. That's the presence that delivers people from demonic activity. That's the presence that sets people free. Every child of God needs an experience of that presence. Every child of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Of course, there is a discipline that God will require of you. Because many a time, the biggest weakness of Christian, Christians or Christianity today is we are, we, we are not disciplined. We don't have a disciplined life. We don't have consistent lives of prayer. 
consistent lives of fasting and committing ourselves and waiting on the Lord. So it's, a, it's something that you need to exercise yourself. It's a discipline. It's called waiting on the Lord. It's, it's tiring, you know. It's tiring. You cannot have a successful ministration when you do not know how to wait on God. When the Bible says, so if it touches our ministration, let us wait on him. Waiting on him is, is a place where you consecrate yourself in solitude just to be with him, to minister to him as he ministers to you. You know, some people pray, many of us, our lives of prayer are damage control. You're in trouble. And then you say, Father, God. You know, and then when you come out of trouble, oh my God, you go back to Netflix and, <laughs> and YouTube and then you eat your burgers until the next time you're in trouble. And when you're in trouble, you say, oh, oh, oh I forgot it. My old friend exists. And then you come back in the presence and say, God. And, and he's been faithful. He bails you out anyway. Praise the Lord Jesus. But may God give us a grace. And I call that grace because it's not in our own strength. To be consistently present before him. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When the Bible says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you. He says you shall ask whatsoever ye desire and it shall be done unto you. When you read the Greek word there for abide, it's directly translated as stay present. So that portion of scripture will read as, if you stay present to me and my words stay present in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done. You see, many people just like that last line. You shall ask what ye will and it shall be done. That's the last line we like. That's the la line all of us want. You see, but there is a condition up there. Stay present to me. And my words stay present to you. So there's a difference between the words of God being in you and you being present to God. Available to God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So many of us are not available with God. We only beep him. And then he calls. You understand? If you look at how much time you have on your phone in a day, just speaking to human beings, how much time you have on your, on your phone in a day to just flip through your videos. You see, when we say idols, worshipping idols, some of you think worshipping this thing on a wall or some molten image built by human hand. But idolatry begins in the heart when you can commit time to a thing that you can never commit to God. That's idolatry. It, that thing is your idol. Do you know how many people can watch a movie so comfortably for two hours and three just goes on and then we have these series that come and they can take you 24 hours. Those things, you know? And then I realized, but how many of us actually can sit in the presence for 15 minutes just to be with God for 15 minutes? 30 minutes, 20 minutes, huh? So, the, 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 the secret of power is as plain as simple that we learn, you learn the price of his presence. If there's anything in this life you should seek for more than anything is, is, is the presence of God. To know that you have a measure on your life that can answer the problems this world has because people are troubled. The world is troubled. I tell my first miracle, I remember those days I learned to just wait on God and be in the presence and, and I remember one time, I'm, I remember those days my mom would come in the room and tell me your dinner is served and that would be 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. And I just didn't have appetite for food and I remember I would tarry through the room up to about 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning and then I remember, oh, there was food and sometimes I could eat it, sometimes it's cold uh, because, you know, it, it, it just happens. And sometimes I'll go without it because there was no microwave. But I'll never forget one of those days I'm just in the room seeking God. And my mom's close friend, an old lady I saw for many years, I had known her for, since I was a child. She used to come by home and be with mom. She's suffering from stage four cervical cancer. And she bled and bled and bled and bled. 
until even the people who are living with her started isolating her utensils and everything because everything would fill with blood. And so they go to the hospital and the tumor is so big, the doctors tell her there is no way we can operate this because it is so big. We will die anyway. And they send her home for dead with morphine. They tell her you have about three months to go, at most. So she says, let me go say bye to my friends. She comes to say bye to my mother. Every time I say that testimony, I feel like something stirs in me. Because, so she tells my mom all this story and then she says, I'm ready to go and I just came to say bye to you. My mom said, uh uh. I have a boy who can pray this thing out. He's, he's in his room praying. <laughs> so she comes and knocks on my door. Boop, boop. Yeah, Grace, come. You know the Mary thing? <laughs> These guys, is, we're out of wine. Oh, no, wait. Uh, you know, see, uh, let me explain this. And it's not yet my time to do what he tells you. So it's this kind of thing. I open. This is a lady. Come. This lady, they say she has this, and then they explain everything. So I remember asking her, do you believe God can heal you? She said, yeah. So I lay hands on her. And I pray, a very simple prayer. She goes home. After three days, the first sign, there was no bleeding. After three days. After one week, this swollen stomach was back to normal. You understand what I'm saying? Right now, she's in her early 80s. And she's not sick. Not even f nothing on her. She's one of the healthiest women I know. From then on, she committed her life to preach the gospel. She's still alive up to today. 80 years old. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, there's nothing impossible with God. There's nothing. Is nothing. So I wanted to know this God even more because the more you see, the more you hunger. And the more you hunger is the more you see. Praise the Lord. It's just like that. And so I understood from then on that there is something about the presence of God that changes even the most complicated things.